Looking inside one of ancient China's forbidden mansions perfectly embodies mystery. One wonders about the women who lived in Beijing and Nanjing's palaces during the Ming Dynasty, which was nearly 600 years ago. Even though it was unfavorable, concubinage was still significantly safer than prostitution and had a lot lower odds of resulting in STDs for poor women who were unable to find husbands. Concubinage was frequently the sole means of financial and social security for such women. Concubinage is sometimes mocked, yet such attitudes miss the fact that, with a few notable exceptions, there were very few career alternatives available for women throughout China's imperial era. A woman may choose to become a wife, a maid, a concubine, or a prostitute. Only a select fraction of individuals who successfully navigated this demanding process would catch the emperor's attention and win his favor. Politics and jealousy were common among concubines, as expected given that the majority would spend their lives in excruciating solitude. During this time in history, beauty was more of a curse than a blessing in China. Of course, intimacy between concubines and anybody other than the emperor was strictly forbidden. The eunuchs, who had a position of tremendous influence in the palace, oversaw and kept an eye on the majority of their actions. Before the emperor entered their bedchamber, concubines were forced to take a bath and visit the court physician. Any lady the emperor invited to his court would be the target of envious rivalry because the emperor had hundreds and occasionally thousands of concubines at his disposal. Concubines lived in their own quarters and spent their days applying makeup, sewing, experimenting with different artistic mediums, and interacting with other concubines. Many of them lived in the palace their entire lives without ever meeting the monarch. Welcome back to History Rediscovered. In this episode, we discuss the cruel, despicable things Chinese concubines went through. The 276 year Ming Dynasty of China, which reigned from 1368 to 1644 AD, has been hailed as one of the greatest periods of peaceful social stability in recorded human history. This dynasty rose to become a powerhouse, undertaking important sea voyages before Christopher Columbus and penning books before the British invented the printing press. The stability and creativity of this dynasty were praised, but there was a darker, more terrible side to it. The Ming emperors were very brutal to the imperial concubines and had no mercy on them. Some Ming emperors had upwards of 9,000 concubines. Many of these women had been abducted from their homes and were confined to a golden jail, only emerging when the emperor called them to his bed. Due to the widespread use of the barbaric practice of foot binding at the period, the crippled women were forced to be carried naked to the expectant man because they were unable to flee or even enter the emperor's sleeping quarters on their own. Although only upper and rich middle class men could afford to have many wives, polygamy was a prevalent practice in feudal China. The presence of numerous women was interpreted as a sign of a man's virility and was considered as an endorsement of masculine potency. The importance of reproduction and maintaining the father's family name were emphasized. Confucianism placed a strong emphasis on a man's capacity for family management as part of his development as a dishui, great learner. As for the emperor, securing an heir to the throne was of utmost significance. The tight separation of concubines and principal wives, all other spouses could not compare to the main wife. She was in charge of submitting to the higher ideals of polygamy and of teaching the other wives how to behave harmoniously for the benefit of all. Concubinage in the imperial household was not all that it seemed. Shizen, the 16th century emperor who purportedly ordered the deaths of more than 200 imperial concubines, was assassinated by 16 members of his harem who sneaked into his chambers in an effort to save him. Despite losing an eye during the conflict, the emperor managed to live thanks to his empress. As a kind of punishment, the concubines had their limbs severed from their bodies and had their heads displayed on poles. There were eight concubine levels. Eunuch and concubines frequently developed tight relationships. Emperors had male consorts as well. The Han Dynasty Emperor Ai is supposed to have declared that he would rather chop off his robe sleeve than wake up his male lover who was sound sleeping on it. Homosexuality is still sometimes referred to in China as the passion of the sleeve. The emperors had a large number of women to keep them busy. 
In the 11th century, one emperor had 121 women at his disposal, including one empress, three consorts, nine spouses, 27 concubines, and 81 helper concubines, the closest round number to one-third of 365, the number of days in a year. Some emperors thought that being intimate with as many women as possible but never ejaculating would grant them immortality. From 266 until 290 BC, Emperor Wu of Jin let a goat pick his concubines. Emperor Wu spent the most of his time with his harem, he would kidnap every attractive girl he could find and take her as his concubine, especially preying on the daughters of his officials. This was crucial work for Emperor Wu, so much so that he declared it illegal to get married before choosing all of his concubines. Emperor Wu's harem eventually contained over 10,000 women. He would travel in a cart pulled by goats to find his romantic partner for the evening. He would spend the night with whichever woman they had taken him to when the goats stopped. AD 713 to 756, monarch Xuanzang had 40,000 concubines. At the period of Xuanzang, it was customary for emperors to free their concubines at the conclusion of their rule. Being a concubine was just a temporary status because it only took a few years for someone to become enraged and assassinate the king. But Xuanzang steadfastly refused to pass away. He ruled for 44 years, and during that time, his harem only grew. He had nearly 40,000 ladies towards the end. They merely sat around studying poetry, mathematics, and the classics while tending to mulberry trees because Xuanzang very definitely didn't have time to meet them all. However, that doesn't mean he stopped expanding his harem. At the age of 60, Xuanzang forced his own son to annul their marriage so that he could take his daughter-in-law as a concubine. Emperors had male consorts as well. The Han Dynasty Emperor Ai is supposed to have declared that he would rather chop off his robe sleeve than wake up his male lover who was sound sleeping on it. Homosexuality is still sometimes referred to in China as the passion of the sleeve. The ladies of the empire also enjoyed themselves. The name of the Tang Dynasty was briefly changed to the Zhou Dynasty under the leadership of Empress Wu Zetian a concubine who had previously served as a nun, she maintained her own male harem. It was thought that preserving the health of the entire Chinese empire depended on regimenting the emperor's sexual life. The enormous Chinese calendar clocks of the 10th century were used to determine the schedule, rotation, and time for the women who slept with the emperor rather than to keep track of time. With brushes that had been dipped in royal vermilion, secretaries kept track of the emperor's sexual activities. Age is measured from the moment of conception rather than the moment of birth in China and certain other Asian nations. When the yin, or female influence, was robust enough to counterbalance the powerful yang, or male force, of the emperor, the imperial Chinese believed that women were most likely to become pregnant on the evenings closest to the full moon. It was thought that on certain evenings, strong character traits would be created in youngsters. Because of this, the empress and spouses slept with the emperor around the time of the full moon, while the lower-ranking ladies, whose primary duty it was to balance the yang and yin of the emperor, did so around the time of the new moon. The Chou Dynasty's record of the rites, 1120 to 256 BC, describes a rotation in which the lower-ranking women come first, the higher-ranking come last. The 81 assistant concubines sleep nine nights in groups of nine on the imperial sofa. Each of the three consorts, the nine husbands, and the empress gets one night alone in addition to the nine spouses. Every month's sequence is finished on the 15th, following which it repeats in reverse. That's it for today, tell us what you think about concubinage in the comments section.